right now, put space where your mind should be. Replace your mind with space. This talk is called the circle of the way. And notice when your mind starts to take up that space again and replace the mind with space. Between practice, between aspiration and practice meant, practice meant, <laughs> between aspiration, practice and enlightenment, there is not a moment's gap. It forms the circle of the way and is never cut off. That's Dogen's NG. There's a poem by Rabia of Basra. Great female Islamic mystic who was alive 500 years before Rumi one of Amelia's favorite poets. The sky gave me its heart. The sky gave me its heart because it knew mine was not large enough to care for the earth the way it did. The sky gave me its heart because it knew mine was not large enough to care for the earth the way it did. Why is it we think of God so much? And you can replace God with awakening. Why is it we think of awakening so much? Why is there so much talk about love? When an animal is wounded, no one has to tell it you need to be healed. So naturally, it will nurse itself the best it can. My eye kept telling me, something is missing from all I see. So I went in search of the cure. The cure for me was beauty. The remedy for me was to love. The remedy for me was to love. Do you remember what brought you to practice? Do you remember what brought you to practice? Was it a longing, a worry? Accident, inspiration, heartache, distress, depression, wonder. Perhaps there was a hunch there is more to this life. Perhaps you had an opening into love. Perhaps there is a deep question gnawing at your heart about the nature of reality, truth. Perhaps some curiosity. What is this meditation all about? Why would people sit in silence together for hours and days? Perhaps when you look back at your life, there actually isn't a moment you began. Perhaps all of these reasons and more are true for you. Perhaps this is a continuation, a continuation, the unfolding of a vow or commitment that picked you up 
at the time of your birth. Perhaps there is no right or wrong answer. This is your life. But when you let yourself reflect, it also opens the question, well, what is practice? How much of your life is included in that word? Is practice something you do for an hour a week? Or is practice an orientation of your heart that never leaves you? What sustains your practice? Why do you continue? Why have you continued for all of these years? This is the culmination of your practice. Why did you continue through this session? Is there something you're hoping for? Is there something you're running away from? They talk more in the Tibetan tradition about the motivations of hope and fear. Right? Those are in there but perhaps there's something else, something much more enduring than whatever answers the mind is coming up with. What if you let those questions sink into the heart, sink into the body? Why do you practice? The mind jumps in, just feel the question. Why do you practice? What are you living for? Why do you get up every morning? Why do you continue with all the things that you do? Think about your life, the people you love, the commitments you have, the things that bring you joy, the struggles. Think about the world, not just with your mind, but with your whole being. What do you call the world? This world that you temporarily dropped out of to do retreat? What aspects of the world weigh on your heart? What motivates you? Where do you find love in the world? And think about the, the planet. The climate crisis. How is that part of your life too? How is that part of your vow? What do you let guide your life? Who do you let guide your life? What do you want? What do you really want? Who 
who, who wants? And what is this wanting made of? Wanting something I think we all touch very intimately during the latter part of session, more in that raw sense, perhaps that wanting is always present. And perhaps we're m- moving through our lives on the surface towards things. I think we can really feel that essence of our wanting during session. The depths of our wanting. What is this wanting made of? Can you summon it up now? And is what you want here? Is this an objectless wanting? Or does it have a goal, an object? something that will satisfy. Sink below the level of thought and feel your wanting, how it's constellated in the body. Does it have a color? A shape? Does it have a mudra within an inner landscape? An image? Are there beliefs that are connected to this wanting? You know, I find the belief like not good enough. It's right there. don't deserve. Maybe there are others. And if you're still in contact with any sense of wanting, let yourself open your awareness. Replace the mind with space. Feel the body senses open, open to the space in the room, the sounds, the breeze, the birds. Hold your wanting. Let it flicker. Body, mind, heart flicker to the rhythm of the wind. to your heartbeat. For a moment, let be in this. Feel the fullness of your being. 
perhaps with the fullness of your wanting. This whole world of your senses open, flowing, flickering, so full. Is there a single thing missing? The mind will think all sorts of things. Rest back in awareness, open the senses, feel your being full, alive. Feel the depths of your wanting. Is the present moment enough? Right here, right now, is this enough? Yes, the mind has its own answer, but feel it in the heart. Feel it with the whole body. Dogen Zenji says, between aspiration, practice, and nirvana, there is not a moment's gap. That wanting our aspiration is the practice is the fulfillment, the completion. You taste for a moment the completeness of this moment. What would it be like to live your life from its completeness, nothing outside. All this is you, bird song, space, sangha, everything you see, hear, smell, taste, touch, this is your life. Shift gears a little bit and ask, what if practice were a circle? The circle of the way, Dogen Zenji talked about this many times. The circle of the way. We have been trained in our culture to think linear, linearly. I do this, I get this. This comes next, this comes next, this comes next. I remember when I was in cross country, we had these t-shirts made, good, better, best. Never let rest till the good be better and the better best. It's by Mother Goose. <laughs> but throughout human cultures and religions, the circle has been a very important image. We, we can drag in this linear thinking and, and paste it onto session. 
oh, my session should go like this. My concentration should go like this. My enlightenment should go like this. Transcendence, here I come. Which isn't wrong. There's an element of practice that has a transcendent quality. But that only linear thinking can really delude us from what's actually happening. From really take us away from truly experiencing our lives in this moment, its completeness, the fullness, the process. So I love the image of a circle, a mandala, a medicine wheel, the cyclic nature of experience. In, in linear models, we're bound by birth and death. We're born, we die, it's over. There's nothing else. Came from nothing, go to nothing. I'm enlightened or I'm not. Duality is set up so quickly in linear models. And so part of what we're doing in practice is undoing that, this or that thinking. It's like so many of our strategies, if we're thinking in the linear birth to death model, is that death is the ultimate human failure. And then practice where we're dying on our cushion is a failure, so why would I want to do it? I don't know. I was just thinking about that today. <clears throat> but what about the cyclic nature of experience? What to, how rich to conceive of the spiritual life, what we're doing in session, our lives as a mandala. You can think of the tarot as a mandala. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the tarot, but the death card is like in the middle. It's not at the end. The end is the world, the major arcana. But we have the seasons which have a birth to death element, spring, summer, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter, the elements, the four directions, the zodiac, the Buddhist mandalas of the five Buddha families or the six realms of existence. These all depict a circle of wholeness with many aspects or energies that one either passes through, so you could think of it as walking the mandala, walking through the cycles of the seasons, walking through the cycles of the day, dawn, noon, evening, night, the different energetic qualities within each month, each time of day. And in the uh, Chinese zodiac, they map the, the 12 uh, characters or animals of the zodiac, which are much more, it's much more depth than just the animals, um, to the 12 hours of the day, to the 12 organs in the body, uh, to the 12 months of the year, to the 12 years in a 12 year cycle. And most of these um, examples that I gave uh, are rooted in the, the elements, which is interesting. The elemental nature, these energetic qualities that we see within our own psyche, human experience, body experience, but also in this world, on this earth. You can think of it as passing through the mandala but also the mandala passing through us. We sit in zazen and encounter these different energies. Sleepiness, restlessness, joy, peace. You can also think of it, we are the mandala. Any given moment, we are a readout of all of these energies. There is no inside or outside. The inside, perhaps, is space. In most mandalic systems, like I said, the elements play a major role, symbolizing a quality or energy maybe in its pure form. Before good and bad, right or wrong, 
there's earth, there's water, there's fire, there's air, there's space. So the five Buddha families give a readout of uh, different emotional, afflictive emotions that we can get caught in, and then also their enlightened qualities uh, based in the, the five elements. So there's earth, which is ratna, and um, the kind of diluted uh, place of stickiness is associated with greed, desire for objects, for stuff. And the enlightened side of that, the enlightened side of that energy, which is interesting. So like we did with wanting, feeling into the energetic quality, you can do this with any afflictive emotion. You notice a constellation of, of greed coming up and feeling into its energetic quality. You can just sit in that energy. And it's said to look for the qualities perhaps of appreciation, abundance, celebration in the fullness of life, satisfaction. And then we have water element, vajra, the afflictive emotion associated with anger, rage, hatred, the inner critic, and the enlightened quality of clarity, mirror-like wisdom, ability to just see things as they are. So when you take the story, the, the, the thoughts that fuel anger and just sit with the pure energetic experience that we call anger, you can feel into, like stripped of the story, trying to do something, the ill will, the other person, yourself, and just feeling the direct sensation in the body, you may notice clarity, clear seeing, sense of empowerment in the body sometimes. And fire, and the fire element, Padma, is associated with passion, lust, pleasure seeking, pleasure seeking in the body, experiences of ecstasy, bliss, and the enlightened quality. So, so if you are able to settle below the thinking mind, which at this stage in session, we're able to do to some extent, and feel the, the energy itself, it may transmute into compassion, connection, intimacy, bliss, a, a, a subtle body bliss, meditative bliss. And the air element, karma, associated with anxiety or busyness. And when you let your, yourself slip below the, the thinking mind, the stressful thoughts that create the feeling of anxiety and, and sit with that feeling, restlessness, busyness, need to do, slip below the planning and feel the energy that fuels your planning. You may uh, t touch into a quality of enlightened activity. Mm -hmm. Say, sometimes say accomplishment, fullness of creativity, budding up. And space is a Buddha, is associated with ignorance or fear, numbing out, 
And when you are able to slip below the level of thought and feel that emotion directly, it opens into spaciousness, all-encompassing wisdom. The space is the pivot in this particular mandala, the center. But also space is included within each of the four quadrants, earth, water, air, fire, emerge in space, disappear into space. This is another quote from Rabia. One day he did not leave after kissing me. Sometimes we don't know what will stay. Doors open in Sashin, and it can happen so subtly, so slowly, that you do not notice how much space has been opened, how much the heart has been opened, and a real fundamental shift, perhaps, that will not leave you has happened already. The doubting mind, the thinking mind that's looking for something else and does not recognize how much space has been open. One day space did not leave after kissing me. So in this mandala, space is in the center and space is surrounding, holding the mandala. I um, once had my birth chart read and the person who read it was a Buddhist practitioner and you know, went through all of the houses and the planets and I was feeling a little overwhelmed by the information and all the different energies that constellate my birth chart. And then afterwards he like showed me the chart and he said, okay, like those dots are the planets. Everything else is space. There's much more space in your chart than these energies. That's true of our life. That's true of our life, but we get sometimes so fixated on the energies. We forget that space is at the center of our mandala and holding everything. And when we can trust in that space, then the energies arise in us. If we don't trust in that space, we're just being pulled around by the energies. When thought is in the center of our mandala, it does not spin so well. That's what you know, the Buddha called dukkha friction, an axle that doesn't spin so well. So replace the mind with space. We contain the world. We contain the world. The energies within the world are the same energies that are within us. As we get to know our own suffering, we can recognize that all the pain in the world has the same root as our suffering. All the pain in the world has the same root as our suffering. A clogged axle, fixed beliefs, glommed onto, held onto for dear life because people forget that their mind is space. Our fear, the death, the letting go that must happen to accept that. The letting go of all of these strategies, the letting go of all of these identifications with these energies that actually just move through move through our space. 
Our ability to love ourselves and the world is related to how much we trust ourselves to awareness, to spaciousness, to not knowing. Then love, response, discernment, appreciation, they flow through us. After Sanzen yesterday, I was reflecting on how Sashin is a kind of initiation ritual. Initiation into the, the mandala of our life. So no, you didn't just finish an initiation, now you're a Buddhist. But perhaps Buddhist practice is part of your mandala, part of your path part of your practice arc. In Sashin, we, we die to ourselves. And everybody has been doing that. It's that process of letting go and coming back to present moment experience. I mean, oftentimes because we have this linear idea of what should be happening in practice, we don't recognize fully how profound it is to come back even once, to disrupt that cycle, that uh, entrenchment, that karmic movement, that energetic constellation, and come back to the groundlessness of the present moment. That's a death and a rebirth right there. And we do that moment after moment, letting go of these karmic tendencies, moment after moment. So profound, the undoing of karma that is happening in each moment of practice. So I said a few days ago, we can't really appreciate the profundity of a moment of zazen. What we're not feeding will not have a life. And when we're not feeding greed, anger, delusion, we're bringing space, we're bringing that absence of greed, anger, and delusion, which I was calling love, into the world, moment by moment. Another poem by Rabia. Die before you die. Ironic, but one of the most intimate acts of our body is death. So beautiful appeared my death, knowing who then I would kiss. I died a thousand times before I died. I died a thousand times before I died. Die before you die, said the prophet Muhammad. Have wings that feared, have wings that feared ever touched the sun. Have wings that feared ever touched the sun. I was born when all I once feared I could love. I was born when all I once feared I could love. We do that by replacing identity clinging with awareness space over and over, holding our fears and anxieties in that space, in that embrace, loving them. And then the self comes back in its particular constellations And what's amazing is over time, we can come to just see the patterns of our mind as energy, as colors of the mandala of our life, and we don't need to fear them. We don't need to fear the world. The mandala of our life always complete 
always just beginning. So how do we face the perceived harshness of the world? What is the appropriate response to a world on fire? We all stand within the mandala of our own karma and awareness is the key, the pivot and the ground. Awareness is the key, the pivot and the ground. These are not questions whose answers we find in a book. These are questions that we let into the heart. We let work on our fears. We bring them into the space of our being and sit in that fire, practice in that fire. And what we do is a moment to moment happening, a moment to moment response. Because when we're living in presence, when we let space be our center, creative responses never before thought of have the opportunity to emerge through us living on the edge of becoming, letting awakening happen through us, letting compassion happen through us. Chosen Roshi's favorite line from the silent illumination, the body being empty, the arms are in activity body being empty, the mind being empty. We let the creativity of the heart space happen through us. Closing poem. Too. In all things, it was easy to love all that was beautiful. The lessons of deeper knowledge, though, instructed me to embrace all things. I am always holding a priceless vase in my hands. If you asked me about the deeper truths of the path and I told you the answers, it would be like handing sacred relics to you, but most have their hands tied behind their back. That is, most are not free of events their eyes have seen and their ears have heard and their bodies have felt. Most cannot focus their abilities in the present and might drop what I said. So I'll wait. I don't mind waiting until your love for all luminous. For, <laughs> so I'll wait. I don't mind waiting until your love for all makes luminous the now. So I'll wait, I don't mind waiting, until your love for all makes luminous 